Look, it's no secret that Donald Trump is not doing too hot right now when it comes to polling, but I will say that there is still a chance that he could win in November because a lot can change between now and then. And I kind of learned my lesson when in 2016, I thought that there was no way this clown would win. I thought Hillary Clinton's victory was a foregone conclusion. But, you know, I was I was humbled by the result of that election. I didn't think that he'd be able to win. So I'm not going to underestimate my opponent. I'm not going to say that he's definitely going to lose. But when I say he's doing bad, he's really doing bad according to polls. When it comes to real clear politics polling averages, Joe Biden is up nine points on average. And at this same time in 2016, Hillary Clinton just wasn't up that high. I mean, she was also up. She had a lead, but it wasn't by nine points. And there's even discussion around this idea that Texas might actually be a swing state in 2020 if nothing changes. Now, again, back in 2016, we were having the same conversation. You know, what if Hillary Clinton is able to win in a landslide? What if Utah is even in play? What if Hillary Clinton can win in Arizona? She's up in the polls. And, you know, that changed. Now, one of the key things that I'm looking at is how Biden will perform in the debates. There's going to be three debates, and if Joe Biden can perform as well as he did in that one-on-one -on -one debate against Bernie Sanders, I don't think it's going to be enough that uh, will change in Trump's direction. Although, I will say that Donald Trump knows that currently, as things stand, if nothing changes, he will lose, and he's going to lose handily. So, as a result of this news, he's kind of grappling with it, and he's he's clearly flailing. He doesn't necessarily know what to do. He's hyper-focused on statues and vandalism, and it's just not something that a lot of people care about. I mean, when 32% of households in July couldn't make their payment for their housing... I mean, you have to focus on something that will impact Americans. If you're not actually handling this pandemic when most Americans want you to do a better job at that, then it's going to hurt you. And as a result, he really is, uh, he's panicking, he's flustered, and his campaign is in complete disarray. And people in Trump's administration, they're kind of starting to throw his campaign manager, Brad Parscale, under a bus and they're placing the blame on him rather than Donald Trump himself. And as CNN reports, with just four months until election day, the Trump campaign is struggling to deploy what was supposed to be a chief feature of the president's re-election effort, the signature Trump rally. Three weeks after the poorly attended Tulsa event, the hangover is still being felt inside the campaign, aides and advisors tell CNN, and safety concerns over bad weather caused the campaign to postpone a rally scheduled for Saturday in New Hampshire, even as skies were expected to be clear by the time Trump took the stage. The president's difficulty turning on his rally machine is indicative of the broader problems the coronavirus poses to him. Not only has the pandemic kept him off the campaign trail, it's ruined much of his case for re-election, sinking the economy, killing more than 135,000 people so far, and robbing him of any argument that Americans are better off than they were four years ago. I think there was a growing sense of concern that the campaign isn't functioning as we want it to. One donor close to the campaign told CNN in the immediate aftermath of Tulsa. Internally, several officials have blamed campaign manager Brad Parscale for the Tulsa debacle, faulting him for not only touting the number of signups, but also for badly overestimating how many people would show up. Officials say Trump's relationship with Parscale hasn't been the same since. He does not like Brad, one advisor said, noting that Trump has taken to frequently cutting Parscale off during meetings and disagreeing with nearly every position he takes, at times ultimately agreeing with the same position when it's later reiterated by another aide in the room. Wow. It's very clear that when Brad offers a position, Trump decides to be against it, the advisor said. Now, this really is telling because it speaks to the panic that Donald Trump is currently experiencing, right? Because... He's kind of backed into a corner at this late in the game. If you shake up your campaign that much, if you replace your campaign manager, that's going to look bad. You're going to get dogged on in the media, and he doesn't want to sound the alarms. So instead, he's kind of just trying to live with Brad Parscale, but at the same time, he hates him, and he's very... Uh, petty in the way that he interacts with him and you know his campaign according to this article which I believe is in complete disarray it's in shambles but in spite of that Donald Trump is trying to play it cool but I'm not buying it so for example he tweeted this out on June 29th 
Sorry to inform the do-nothing Democrats, but I'm getting very good internal polling numbers. Uh huh. Just like 2016, the New York Times polls are fake. The Fox News polls are a joke. Do you think they will apologize to me and their subscribers again when I win? Yeah, I'm just not buying that. Uh, it's very clearly a head fake. He doesn't want his um his supporters to feel discouraged. So he's trying to keep up this facade that he's definitely going to win and the polling is fake. And look, he may still very well pull out a victory. That's not inconceivable to me. But currently, he's not doing a good job. And the campaign that he's running is honestly embarrassing. And the fact that he's going with Keep America Great as his slogan. I mean, you have a pandemic, a great recession happening, possibly Great Depression going on. And you're saying, keep America great, reelect me? I mean, it's honestly baffling, because I thought that even as stupid as he is, his political, his political instincts were better than this, but it's just, he's making a fool of himself. Now, part of the thing with these rallies, it's not just political, it's not just a means to him signing up new voters, getting voter data, and generating, you know, the sense of excitement. It also was psychologically beneficial to Donald Trump because if he can't do what he loves doing the only thing he loves about being president arguably these rallies then he kind of gets pissy he gets moody and he starts being petty towards his own campaign manager um and his mood has been down not just since Tulsa but even way back dating to April which is when his own advisors <laughs> um Hope Hicks and Dan Scavino they literally brought in big trucks to cheer him up I repeat, they brought in 18-wheelers to put Donald Trump in a good mood. And they're having to do things like this as if he's a child because what kept him satisfied before was the rallies. That was the one thing he liked. And it's weird to me, like, his rallies are strange because he's not really talking about policies. He's just kind of, like, freestyling it for an hour or two hours. But he loved it. He loved doing it. Nobody can deny that you can see that he clearly enjoys doing that. But without that, if you take that away from him, especially considering the fact that it was a really useful tool to, for his campaign, I mean, you see how it affects him. He, he doesn't know how to respond. He has one setting and one setting only. And if you take away his greatest strength, then he can't go to plan B or plan C. He just kind of fumbles, right? He starts talking about statues. Nobody cares about statues. This is not a big issue. Nobody cares about this. People are worried about how they're going to put food on a table, and they're worried about whether or not them and their loved ones will be protected during a very contagious, deadly pandemic, and he's not delivering on these fronts. So look, the one thing that I'm going to look out for are the debates. Joe Biden, whatever his staffers gave him uh, during that Bernie Sanders debate, if they give that to him again, and he at least does a half adequate job if his performance is mediocre he'll be fine nothing will change i'm guessing uh but at this time i mean to see donald trump crash and burn already you know flame out this soon and not really know how to recover and just kind of be petty towards his own campaign manager i mean it speaks to you know i, I think a sign of what's to come now again i want to add that we should never underestimate our opponents, as I alluded to at the beginning of this clip. Never underestimate someone who, you know, you think is going to lose. Don't take, you know, a particular moment in time for granted. Because we saw how fast things changed during the primaries with Bernie Sanders when he was riding high and all of a sudden it was over. So, you know, that's it, that's something that could happen plausibly in this election. Trump could still feasibly win. It's going to be difficult and a lot has to change for that to happen, but it could happen. So, what I want to say is don't get too cocky. It's not a foregone conclusion that he will be defeated, but at this point in time, this snapshot that we're given, it does look likely likely that he is going to lose because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> but again, you know, we'll have to wait and see, but um the fact that his campaign is in disarray, um, that is certainly a, a really bad sign for him. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay? <laughs>